Mike Woods, we're out at Madison Square Park where this morning they held the opening ceremonies. We just want to give you a taste of what you missed earlier on. Please, let's make New York ring from the, from the Battery up to uh, Inwood uh, and in all the five boroughs with praise for our veterans community. And I want to start by, on behalf of the governor, thanking all of our veterans both past and present, those who are serving today, thanking you for your service, your sacrifice. To all those who served in World War II, in Korea, in Vietnam, in Desert Storm, in Iraq and Afghanistan, and to all those who served in peacetime to prevent future wars, thank you for your service. Those were some moving words and images, but we have a lot more to come. Right now, we'll send back up to the booth. All right, what a great ceremony it was. And look, golf carts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, America Carrier Veterans, I believe they're talking about aircraft carriers. Correct. And uh, Paul, for all your service, I, uh, I think I'm the only one at the table who's actually landed on an aircraft carrier. And what was that like? Did uh, you ever miss? I want to know. Oh my goodness. You, I missed, you missed a lot, absolutely. <laughs> but missing was not the worst thing in the world. It what was if, actually part of the kind of the safety procedures. If you missed, you went to full power. Actually, every time you landed, whether you caught a wire or you didn't, you would go to full power and uh, take off again. That's all. That's and, it? Uh, then you you wouldn't land again. in the water or anything no, like that? No, no, no. Okay, just check it. <laughs> I mean, I sit next to you every morning. You know, I feel like we have splash landings a lot. <laughs> 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 the USS America, I, uh, I actually landed on that ship once in 1994. All right, let's check in with uh, Mike Woods. He's on Fifth Avenue. Mike? All right, Greg, Rosanna, Paul, uh, we are on Fifth Avenue, and we have Bang Wong with us, the National Commander of the American Legion. Thank you so much for stopping here. Thank you. And, Thank uh, you. and this is a great day. I mean, you are really, uh, I love the uh, parade, and, and every day, really, when it comes to being a veteran. Well, this is Veterans Day. This is the one day that we officially recognize the contribution and sacrifice all the veterans. So we are, I'm very glad to be here. Yes, and, and, and you say that it's really not about just one day, but really all the time that folks really need to recognize and appreciate the work that the military folks do for us. Absolutely. We should recognize and uh, help the veterans all year round, especially after their sacrifice for us, for the whole country. So. At this time and age, when we have more veterans coming home right. from Afghanistan and Iraq, it's more important that we understand the, and appreciate their sacrifice and understand their need. So we, can, we should be prepared to help them find jobs, resettle, and get back to the community being a productive citizen. So we have to get them re-adjusted uh, back to uh, living back in the uh, country, or the homeland, and uh, just getting back to life as usual, and also, I'm sure, taking care of their families. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what the American Legion's here for. We're ready to support them. We're ready to help them. Very good, Bang Wong. So you're the national commander for one year, and then you have to pass the buck to uh, the next next uh, person in line. So, but there's a lot of good folks like you doing great work. So absolutely, so, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. That you do, and uh, all the best. Thank you for the opportunity. All right, you thank got you. it. You got it. All right, Greg Rosetta. All right, we're looking at the Mountain Ridge High School Band from Maryland, all the way up to New York City. <laughs> Little uh, hard hat. I saw a 12-year-old construction worker there. <laughs> uh, all right, it is uh, 1.45, getting a little bit hungry. You know what? Real I'll quick, Paul, it. real quick, <laughs> I want to know what it was like to eat uh, during combat in Vietnam. What did you rely on over there? Uh, peaches and crackers out of a sea ration can, and in the midst of a combat battle, I'll never forget it, because we were going to bring in food that night, through the fire, bullets flying around, a little kid comes crowning over, and I said, what do you want? He said, sir, the guys in the foxhole want to know we have an ice cream. <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> and he went back. That was it. I couldn't believe it. I said, he risked his life to ask the question, and we have an ice cream. And I said, that's an airborne soldier for you. <laughs> uh, today, you can get 31 flavors uh, in, in Afghanistan. They, they do treat the, uh, the folks well uh, over there. All right, we have to go back to our special correspondent, Elise Wick. She's on Fifth Avenue. We can get a lot. I'm here with Vince McGowan, the president of the United War Veterans Council. Hey, Vince, how are you doing? 
doing well, Elise. We have a beautiful autumn day here. New York has come out. We have over a million people on the Fifth Avenue. Uh, corporate America is supporting this parade, uh, unlike it's ever been uh, supported before. Uh, New York City and New York State have, and the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, have really helped in making all of this happen today. So we've never seen this kind of cooperation. Uh, I really feel that the we've crossed the threshold, and now that the veterans community has fully established its value in the community, uh, that jobs are opening up, school is becoming uh, a uh, almost a, a requirement for the young guys and gals coming out, and the city is uh, falling in love with veterans again. So it's a great thing. Well, that must be great. As a Vietnam vet, you're one of the first people to walk in this parade. So tell us, you know, how you see it now and the scale that it's become now. How does that make you feel as a Vietnam veteran? Well, you know, the, uh, the city and the country did not always treat veterans well. And those mistakes of the 60s and 70s uh, were manifested in the poor attendance and the almost loss of the parade in the 80s. And the United War Veterans Council took on the responsibility uh, to rebuild it. And here we are now uh, in the first decade or the beginning of the second decade of, the, of this new century, uh, moving into uh, the War of 1812 anniversary next year with a street full of people, marching bands from uh, 22 different states. Uh, the, uh, the infrastructure of the city is just uh, working with us and the cooperation level has never been so great. So I'm feeling very good about it to answer your question. Well, we'll make sure we'll never forget. Yes. Now back to you, Rosanna and Greg. So much, Elise. All right, we're looking at some great marching bands and did you see the faces in the crowds? Uh, people are really enjoying themselves and hats off to all our men and women who serve our country so proudly. Rosanna, no problem. <laughs> yes, hats off to you, Greg and Paul. Well, that thought would be very nice of you. One thing that we, we... We are all here because you guys are over there, and we appreciate it so, so much. We, uh, we couldn't be more proud, and uh, happy Veterans Day, we're thinking of you. The ladies and gentlemen of the Armed Forces, I'd like to say thanks for your hard work and sacrifice. And, you know, I know your families and everyone supports you, and uh, happy Veterans Day.